I'll present seven ideas on small courtyard or balcony antennas for a Jeff. A lot of amateurs think that they might only have a courtyard three or four meters wide and then they look at dimensions for antennas like a 40 meter dipole that's 20 meters end to end and they might conclude well there's no way I'm going to have room to operate a Jeff in this area. In this video I'll give some ideas on how that's not actually true. Even with a small amount of space, there's a lot you can do, including getting on the HF bands. If you are in an apartment, it really helps if you've got a balcony, particularly the type that you can open up and stick an antenna out of, especially if there's a railing and there's enough clearance up the top to have a reasonable amount of height. So if your balcony sticks out, or maybe you're on the top, then that really helps. And what you can do with that, especially if your balcony has a metal railing, is that you can stick maybe three or four vertical antenna mounts. Then you can have something like a 5 8 vertical on two meters. That will also double as a quarter wavelength on six meters. So you get two bands straight from there with the one antenna mount. You might also have a separate mounting for something like 10 meters. 10 meters is a band that won't be open all the time but it will give you efficient performance from a small vertical even if it's only 1.5, 1.8 meters long. Something like a cut down CB whip. And particularly on CW and digital modes you can get away with verticals for lower HF bands like 40 and 20 meters you might be have an arrangement where you just screw in the vertical you want to use so if 15 meters is open then you just screw that in or maybe at night and you might want to try 7 megahertz you just unscrew the 15 meter vertical and screw in this one for 7 megahertz now the sort of verticals I'm talking about are mobile type antennas normally. They won't be very efficient, particularly on a band like 7 megahertz. But if you're using CW or digital modes, then you should still be able to make contacts. And especially if you've got a bit of height, that can help as well. If you've got a balcony, if you're in an apartment, then consider using its railing and put some mobile antenna mounts on there and have some verticals. Depending on local activity, you might want to try different band combinations. For instance, you could get a mobile antenna for two meters and 70 centimeters that could screw into one of your antenna mounts. And for six and 10 meters, one possibility is you could try getting a vertical antenna for 10 meters, say a 27 megahertz CB whip you might be able to put a trap in it at say 1.3 meters or so above the base and if you get the inductance and capacitance values for the trap ride then you could make it a dual band trap vertical for 50 and 28 megahertz so if you do that you'll be able to get multiple bands with a relatively small number of antenna mounts on your balcony. Another thing that could be possible with a balcony, especially if you're higher up, is to dangle a extendable fishing pole. The reason why I say extendable is there might be cases where you are a bit sensitive about your antenna being visible all the time. So you might only stick it up either when you're on the air or at night when no one's going to see it. And if you do that, if you're sufficiently high up, you could dangle a wire straight down and that will give you quite good performance on HF. You could tune it up as an infed. You could possibly use the balcony railing as sort of a counterpoise and possibly even use a ground tuning unit. I've done videos on that and I think that will give you quite good performance on HF. Another option, if you are not very high up above the ground, 
and you've got some clear air is you can have your telescoping pole at an angle from the balcony so it projects up and if you've got say an eight or nine meter pole then you can have a vertical antenna it will probably pick up noise from the various apartments above you but you will still be able to get on the air and that's a possibility for bands like 40 and 20 meters this is more if you are in an older or low-rise apartment but depending on the roof you might be able to get into the loft if you are in a top floor and if you can do that then you can string something up a dipole maybe even a trap dipole you could get two bands like 40 and 20 meters out of it a fan dipole um, you, that means more wires but you're not having to mess around with traps so you're getting full bandwidth on all the bands or you could just have a single wire split in the middle as a doublet and that will work quite well on all frequencies above about one third of a wavelength end to end so if you've got room for let's say seven meters end to end then that will work quite well as a dipole for frequencies above about 14 megahertz and you can just have your balanced or open wire feed line going down antenna coupler and be able to tune up quite a few bands with that from 14 right up to 50 megahertz so if you've got access to the roof space not many of you will but that is a possibility if you can the only thing is that the roof can't be metal that will block the RF so better if you've got a tile roof or slate or timber something like that but not metal another possibility you should think about is opening windows some windows you can't open very far other cases you can open the windows quite a distance and be able to stick things out of like wires if you're lucky there might be a tree or something you could tie it to or you could leave it dangling or maybe a pole that will stick the wire so that it's projecting out from the building and you can load that up um, just use thin wire it might not even be permanent it might just be temporary that you would roll in any time you want to finish now if you can't get access to opening the window but you do have access to both sides of the window then you could do an experiment like I did in, a, in an earlier video where I sent RF through the window by making a capacitor in my case I just used kitchen aluminium foil um, just a big square rectangle thing on either side probably the bigger the better and that can allow you to transmit RF through the glass window you're probably quite limited um, there would be a lot of people in apartments where you don't necessarily have access to both sides of the window but if you do then that is one possible idea another possibility is making up a metal mounting bracket and mounting some mobile antennas now that could work in cases where you don't have a balcony but you do have a window you might still be able to get the wire going out through the window opening and be able to use that as an antenna if you've got access to a bit of garden even if, if it's only a small square of garden a small courtyard then you have a lot of opportunities yes you might not have very much width but you do have a bit of height so that's where you should be consider either a vertical now a problem with a vertical is that you'll need some radials and you might not have much room even if you don't have much room put out as much as you can maybe even um, uh, twist and coil the radials maybe even consider a short counterpoise and a ground matching unit uh, even something like a telescoping pole that's nine or ten meters long that's a quarter wavelength on seven megahertz nearly a half wavelength on 14 megahertz so that is a possibility if you've only got a sh small courtyard then a vertical like that can be a good antenna to get you on HF 
Another thing I would suggest is an inverted L. Even if it's got a load loading coil at the top and you can get some economies in antenna length and still be able to get on the air. For example, I described it was more for portable use rather than home use, but you could definitely build one of these from home. I'd say it was a shortened half wavelength end fed wire. The normal length for 7 megahertz is 20 meters or half wavelength, but in this case I was able to get it down to 12 meters total length end to end. And if you've got a length of 12 meters, then that makes it much easier to fit into a small yard, especially if a lot of it is vertical as an inverted L. So you could have, say, a 9 meter long pole, the wire going from the bottom up to the top, then the rest could go horizontal. And even if your yard was only four meters wide, then you could fit that in. You might want a second pole so that the top of the inverted L is as horizontal as you can. But yes, that offers a lot of opportunities. The wire that I described was basically a tri-band antenna. It was um, 12 meters long total. At the 10 meter point was a loading coil which was used only on 7 megahertz. The 10 meter bit, the bottom bit by itself, that was a half wavelength vertical on 14 megahertz and the antenna also worked on 28 megahertz. So watch that video, it's very simple, just um, a wire matching unit at the bottom and a loading coil not too far from the distant end. And that can get you on three HF bands, even if you've only got a narrow courtyard. So, as I mentioned before, right at the beginning, a seven megahertz dipole is 20 meters from end to end, but you can economize a lot on that by doing tricks like the inverted L, where you could accommodate that band in a courtyard only four meters or so wide. And that is really good if you are in small townhouses, villas, um, units, we call them in Australia, and you can still get on the air, get on HF, despite having a much, much smaller yard than you would have if you had a, a large house and, and land. So definitely look into that. There's only a few things you really need to be experimenting. Basically thin insulated wire, get as much as you can as you'll be using it for various antenna experiments. A telescoping fishing pole, maybe nine meters or so tall. An antenna coupler, like an L-match. A lot of ideas on my website. And that's pretty much it. You can do a lot with antennas with those basic ingredients. Another possibility, if your yard is narrow, is an oblong loop. An oblong loop is a full wavelength in perimeter and it's unusual in that the shape gives it a 50 ohm impedance. So you could, if you wanted to, just connect it straight to your 50 ohm coax cable and you'd have a one-to-one -one VSWR. Or you might have a, a ballon if you want at the, at the bottom, though you can get away without it. And the dimensions for the oblong loop are one sixth of a wavelength wide and one third of a wavelength high. And that will give you horizontal polarization. So if you're on two meters SSB, you'll want horizontal polarization and an oblong loop can give you quite good results. And much better than if you're using a vertical because you'll have the issues with the cross polarization. Now the oblong loop is probably good for bands like 2 meters, 6 meters, 10 meters. When you're getting into the lower HF region then it starts to get a bit tall. Like a third of a wavelength on 80 meters is 26 meters tall which you wouldn't be able to fit or want such a massive tower, especially in a small unit development. So yeah, it's a good antenna, 
being a loop it might have lower noise than some other types of antennas but it's more for higher HF and lower VHF bands. Again I've done videos displaying and demonstrating the oblong loop for bands like 6 and 10 meters and you could make one out of a pair of telescoping squid poles um, just use thin insulated wire and you can um, get on the air the only thing though it's a single band antenna although having said that you could use open wire feed line and antenna coupler and get maybe coverage of a two or two and a half to one ratio in frequency so you could cover um, frequencies like 15 through to 6 meters something like that with an oblong loop but then, then it starts to get a bit big another thing I should mention and I think this is particularly popular in the United States where they love flying the flag is a flagpole antenna now how you do this depends on your flagpole if it's an aluminium type flagpole then the flagpole itself is your radiating element and you might have to find some way of connecting or disconnecting it from the ground yeah you, you want it to be isolated from the ground so then you can um, make your connection at the bottom and ideally you'd have some radials and things um, uh, for your counterpoise another possibility if your flagpole is not metal then you might be able to conceal some thin wire inside it or down the side and you can have the similar effects there another possibility you could use the flagpole as a vertical dipole and again that would be good for bands like maybe 20 meters would be too low in frequency then you'd need a 10 meter tall flagpole but it would still work band like 10 meters it would be ideal then your flagpole would only need to be 5 meters tall and that is an antenna called the flower pot I described it for two meters and had some good results and you could put that in the flagpole so yeah getting back to the flower pot antenna that's basically a vertical antenna made of coax cable it's split in the middle and the braid forms one side of the element the bottom bit and the inner is the top part of the element so yep a flagpole is a possibility both as an antenna itself or as a support for an antenna that you might have going out the window trees as well they are a good way to disguise antennas especially in conjunction with thin wire uh, you might be in a situation um, a deed restricted community or um, CC is an ours where you're not strictly allowed to have an antenna unless you get permission from people you, you might be able to conceal something or maybe only have it up when you're operating on the air so this has been a cycle chat talk on various antenna options for HF if you've got very little room in a lot of cases if you're in a small unit villa even an apartment you may still be able to get on the air on HF a possible trick if receive noise is your problem is you could possibly use one of those remote Kiwi SDR things for your receiving and so even if it's very noisy at, at home you might find it's actually easier to transmit from home than to receive and still be able to make contacts so there's definitely some opportunities that we didn't have than uh, compared now compared with um, uh, 10 or 15 years ago if you're getting started in amateur radio there's some books I think you should consider if you're in the United States ham radio get started is the book for you it talks a lot about what amateur radio offers and how you can get started a lot of hints and tips especially if you're just getting on the air in Australia very similar book but for Australian conditions is the Australian ham radio handbook also when you're online and ordering consider also 99 things you can do with amateur radio and also the ham radio dictionary there's definitions for something like 1500 terms so those books I think are good if you are getting started in amateur radio 
or if you're more into antennas, if you want an elaboration of some of the antenna ideas I've discussed here, but more with an accent on portable operating, then I've written two antenna books, hand-carried QRP antennas and more hand-carried QRP antennas. And if you're into low power, then of course there's Minimum QRP, top selling book, well known all around the world, and I suggest uh, that's a good book to get you started in equipment, antennas, and operating for low power amateur radio. So have a look at my website, vk3ye.com, or search their titles on Amazon.